Let's play this clip. This is new. This is brand new, fresh off the plate. Big up the final kiss up Reddit guys for putting this together. It's titled, Brendan Shaw was given too much too fast, which is very true. This is a quote taken from Joey Diaz. I think- he was dropping. I believe he was starting comedy, and I was very happy for him, but I didn't want him to become a Brendan Schaub, like for people to go after Brent. Like I didn't want people to go after Lee, how they went after Brendan. I appreciate what Brendan did. But at the end of the day, a lot of you people are right. He was given too much too fast. I love Brendan. I'm not saying nothing bad about him. What happened was that 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 you don't react well to that when you're a young comic. You don't, guys. All that up front of the third or second year is not healthy for anybody. I think it was an episode of The Church where Joey's talking to Lee Sayat because I felt like I don't know if you've noticed it, but if you never listen to um The Church What's Happening Right Now, Joey Diaz's old podcast. He used to talk to Lee Sayat about advice. Like he used to give Lee Sayat advice about stand up and he used to use Brendan as an example. I always felt like he always had Brendan as an example, like uh, like a cautionary tale. Hey, don't do this. Because if you listen to the church, what's happening right now, you would have recognized towards the end, Lee Sayat had a lot of frustrations because he felt like Joey Diaz wasn't, wasn't really helping him, right? Because he was trying to get into comedy. He's actually doing stand up now, actually. Lee Sayat's actually a legit stand up. He actually goes and does spots and stuff. So big up Lee Sayat. And he's obviously lost a bunch of weight. He looks really good. So big up him. But he'd always try to flip in, get Joey to help him out with comedy. Hey, get me a spot. Bring me on tour with you. And Joey was really good to be fair to him, even though they were, you know, even though Joey was fucking drugging him all the time and just making his life a hell. Joey Diaz was really good about making sure that Lee would only hang around with other comics the same sort of like level as him. He would never let him hang around with him or be in his whole orbit because he used to say, which I think is very true and it's something that I've always kind of kept in the back of my head with my like little kind of, you know, amateur fucking DJ career stuff. It's quite hard to go and hang out with the big dogs and be a part of that crew because you're friends with them and shit and then go back and do like the, you know, the fucking treble runs or whatever or the comedy clubs where no one turns up and shit when you hang around with Bill Burr and Joe Rogan and Tom Papa all these kind of big dogs Tom Segura Burt Kreischer it's very difficult to go back to your level because you're with those big dogs and the problem with Brendan was that he obviously is best friends with Brian Callen they got a podcast together he then gets introduced to Joe Rogan because I think that's what happened right he met Brian first then he met Joe Rogan and then he starts to meet all Joe Rogan's comedy friends who are all quote unquote killers and monsters and then he doesn't have a chance to grow and become an actual, you know, just grow into comedy. Because the thing that's really strange about his grow up, his glove, I think someone mentioned it here. I think it was um, Ryan Joseph in the stream chat the other day. So big up Ryan Joseph in the stream chat. I think Ryan Joseph mentioned something like Brendan started stand up at like 2016. And in 2017, he was already performing at the comedy store. That is insane. Especially the way they talk. Like, I don't know much about the comedy store. I've never been there. Um, I only went to a Laugh Factory when I went to LA and I think I went to where else I went to I think that was it I, was, I think I went to a Laugh Factory I didn't, I didn't think I, got to, I went to the comedy store when I went to LA that time ago but the way that Joe and Joey Diaz sorry Joe Rogan all those guys were talking about the fucking you know comedy store they held it up in, in on the on a you know they held it up on a on a fucking um, on a pedestal so to have Brendan performed after a year is insane, especially when you can think about his standard of comedy. Like, imagine, look how look how bad he is now. Can you imagine how bad he was when he first started? Can you imagine how bad he was when he first got into stand-up comedy? When he first got introduced to it? Can you imagine how terrible he was at it? And yet, yet those guys fucking got him in straight away. It's absolute heinous, to be fair. So... I really did like the way that Joey kind of, you know, steered um, Lee Sayet away from trying to bring him into his group. I said, no, hang out with your open micers, hang out with your degenerates, like your kind of social group, because you need to have that introduction. You need to go through the mud. You need to be hanging around with people that are your level. And then you can work your way up that way, because it's going to give you, if you hang around with my friends, it's going to give you a false sense of security. Anyways, so this clip, I think, summarizes all of it because i think it does a lot of like clips and features of like you know brenda with all the big guys over there so let's probably let's click this quickly and see what he says but i'm pretty sure this is going to be a good one so big up the final kiss over there guys for uploading this this is going to be good actually let me uh, make sure that this is full screen actually let's get this full screen there you go Jesus, look at all the fucking flyers. 
Look at all the flyers. Moon Tower Comedy Festival 2017. No right to perform at the Moon. I didn't even know he's performing there. He performed at the Moon Tower Comedy Festival in 2017. One year into comedy. He's already performing at comedy festivals. <sighs> I'm not, I'm not lying. I think if it was me, I would have turned down some opportunities. I know he always says, oh, the Showtime deal was too good to turn down. Who would have Who would have turned it down? I would have. I would have definitely turned down a Showtime deal two years into comedy. Showtime, comedy special, tied into your MMA. Like, nah, tell them, look, I want an MMA show or give me it. Or, or like if they said you got a comedy show deal tied in with the MMA show, at least give me like four years maybe before I do my special. Give me another two years or something. But now I'm not doing a stand-up special in two and a half years. Are you insane? Like, it's never going to be good. Brendan, what's that? Man, what's that? Brendan money fight, biggest money fight, Leicester Square Theatre in London. Jesus Christ, bro! He played at Leicester Square Theatre. That's a that's a decent capacity, isn't it? Let me just quickly check out my friend. That's a decent capacity venue. That's a theatre, basically. I'm pretty sure. Leicester Square, yeah, because I think that's where Tim Dillon performed when he came here. Leicester Square Theatre, Leicester Capacity. Uh, the capacity of Leicester Square Theatre is what? 400 seats. Okay, it's not that big, but still, he was selling out 400 seats in London in 2017. 400 seats in London. And then he cancelled the whole fucking Euro tour that I fucking got refunded for. Fuck. I really wanted to see him, to be honest. I really wanted to see him perform. I really wanted to see him perform. I'm so gutted he cancelled that tour, man. Big Brown breakdown in Australia. He went on He went on an Australia New Zealand tour in 2017. Yo. He went on an Australia and New Zealand tour in 2017. Fucking hell. Let's let's check some of these fucking venues. Fawnberry. Fawnberry Theatre. God almighty, bro. That's insane. He was playing some The capacity of the Fawnberry Theatre can host up to what? 100 to 300 guests. It can also host 300, 500 guests for a cocktail. Okay, so 300. He he was selling at 300. To be fair, he did this tour pretty well. Judging by the venues, it seemed like he did a world tour where all the venues were under 500. So I wonder why he felt he could then do a thousand. Like, that's a strange thing. Like, I don't know why he did that. He probably should have done this before. He should probably should, but then again, post COVID, are there really any promoters that would be willing to put on a tour for an American comedian to come over with his brother? with all these demands and shit to only do venues that are 500 capacity and under it probably wouldn't be worth it do you know what I mean you probably wouldn't get much back from it so probably that's why he has to do bigger venues for more of the pay cut I'd imagine so stay in your lane tour Oxnard California Jesus Christ bro look at that guy look at that puck oh my god <laughs> objectively look at those beautiful cars look at those beautiful cars a gtrs and a fucking g-wagon in like gun metal with like black rims tinted windows are you insane and if i'm not mistaken you guys are no more law than me this this is the house that he sold quietly he didn't let, announce it or anything they downgraded this is the house that they sold quietly very very quietly and then they downsized to the the kind of mini mansion they have now but this is a legit mansion look at this it has like a fresh prince of bel-air staircase you know the fresh prince of bel-air the kind of stairs go up that way like crazy area to park like two legit big wide body cars fucking insane bro and this is all from redacted podcast horrible stand-up comedy terrible merch just raking in the dollars this is when cast media was just like cutting in mad checks living well you know like because have you noticed now he doesn't even get sponsored by am i, am I mistaken i don't think tfk even has a sponsor what's um what's rogan's thing i don't even think i don't even think rogan's on it sponsors tfk you know I swear to God, I don't even think Rogan's T on it sponsored TFAK. That's how bad things have gotten. Now he has to just like, you know, what's the thing? He's got, what's those, um, those shots, whatever those weird shots are. God almighty, bro. Look how amazing his life was. 
<laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of sad. I'm not gonna lie. Part of me kind of feels a bit sad and a bit bad for the guy because the downfall has been epic. Because especially because this this type of person, for regular you for a regular person like you and I, it doesn't really matter, right? Because you get to pay your bills. He basically doesn't have to work a regular job. This is still a dream life. But for someone like him who values material things and status and image above all, this is definitely a downgrade that he now has to like convince himself to drive like what um pickup trucks and shit and dodges when he was driving you know gtrs gt2 rs sorry and fucking g-wagons and you know lambo you know porsches and shop porsche trucks what's that, no, what's that lambo trucks and stuff god damn it and have you noticed too by the way have you noticed um i don't like to talk about her too much on here but the wife she doesn't post too many pictures of herself like drinking a coffee driving a car down the road and you know strategically putting a coffee cup next to the steering wheel to show off the Lamborghini logo. We don't get none of those pictures anymore. None of those eating salad in my fucking, you know, big Bentley truck. Of course, because, you know, that truck is long gone, unfortunately for her. She has taken Uber probably everywhere now. Oh. 2018 Golden Glo Yo, this nigga was hosting the Golden Globes after show. <laughs> Oh my god, look at that face. That look at the, look at the eyebrows. I can't believe he didn't get much more of an insult on this. Like, look at the fucking ridiculous eyebrows. He's got abuela eyebrows, you know? He's got eyebr you know how he always talks about his mother in law not being able to speak English? He actually looks like an abuela. He actually looks like one, you know? That's the thing. He looks more like an abuela than his actual mother in law. Can you imagine that? He looks more like a tia than his actual mother-in-law. Look at those fucking eyebrows. <sighs> Golden Globes after show featuring Brendan on E. Do you think he? Can, do you think he can even get? Do you think? Do you think he can even get a call back from E? Do you think he can even? Call, do you think he could call someone from E for for anything? Do you think so? I should let me get rid of the sound because it's going to copyright claim me. Brendan Shaw, where's this? In Miami, Milwaukee, be the E tour, Fifty Shades of Brown tour. Again, I don't even know why the, the names of the the names of the tours are super weird. This is the one tour I should have probably went to, isn't it? I think this was no, this is pre. No, actually, this is the tour that got cancelled, isn't it? This is the tour that got cancelled just before the pandemic. I think so, if I'm not mistaken. Fifty Fifty Shades of Brown. I don't even know what that what that even means. That sounds like a bit like a like a like a diss isn't it it's almost like he's insulting himself 50 shades of shit doesn't it sound like that like why would you call your tour 50 shades of brown thick boy tour 2022 one the amount of tours he did the thick brenda short tour this is a weird flyer as well by the way i didn't even get that at all in the slightest yeah, the fucking Jeffrey Dahmer shit was very insensitive, but hey, he went to clout chase. Yeah, this is a very straight. He he used to love this picture. Brendan loves this picture. I remember he used to post it all the time. I think he I think he must have got a lot of good comments from the baddies because he used to always post. Like I felt like he always used this poster in flyers. He loved this poster of himself, like in his um, in what you call it, in his dressing gown in a hotel somewhere with wearing dunks and his hair all fussed fucked up like that. I think he actually thinks he looks cute like this. He loves it. He's always posting pictures of himself. And like, I don't know if he does it anymore because I don't check his Instagram. But remember, Brendan used to always do those selfies in the morning, like the morning selfie, like with his, with his bed head. Like, super strange. Like, kind of faulty behavior. Like, what are you doing, bro? Like, <laughs> why is the first thing in your mind when you wake up to post a selfie of yourself? Like, what? So bizarre. He on a thick tour. Brendan Shaw, Charlotte, Trash Panda tour. All the names of the tours are terrible. What does Trash Panda even mean relating to him? Did you have fun tour 2023? The, what you got Chicago keep on trucking tour? <laughs> Brendan with fucking Joe Rogan living large. This is probably the, the best condition he's doing, isn't it? Yo, big up uh, Austin Casey. I appreciate it, brother. Big up Oz. Glad to join a daytime stream. Yes, yes. Big up, Austin Casey. I appreciate you. Thank you for joining, brother. What's the deal? What's the deal? Hope everybody's well. Thank you for joining. Yes, very rare daytime stream today. I thought, why not bang it out? You know, 
instead of being lazy and timing something for what you call it timing something for um for later on and never, never following through i thought why not you know do something and actually be somewhat productive so here i am um but yeah <laughs> Uh, honestly, but yeah, look, he, look, he actually looks in good shape here. He actually looks in pretty decent shape. He's well put together here. He doesn't look as fucked up as he used to in the past. So, decent little performance there. Let's continue the vid. What's that? Rogan, look at that. Rogan, Chris, Chris, two people who are like now been excommunicated, isn't it? They replaced Rogan, replaced Brandon and Chris Leah with um who? What's his name again? With um Shane Gillis, Mark Norman, that whole crew have now replaced them completely, isn't it? They've been replaced completely by those kind of guys, man. Absolutely, you know, sickening, sickening affair, sickening affair. That's at the UB surprise taping, right? This is the taping you'd be surprised. Pick up a side, appreciate you. The Golden Globe look was what Cat Williams was talking about. Bapa didn't protect his hole and his career still crashed and burned. Oh, mate, yeah, it's like... <sighs> that's got to be a hard way to come back down. That's, that's the thing about success, isn't it? Like, I think somebody mentioned it the other day about having, like whether or not you'd want to get it's almost like the lottery thing isn't it what would you prefer would you prefer somebody give you like 10 mil up front right now in your current financial condition with all your debts whatever you have at the moment or somebody give you a salary of like 40k a year until the rest of your life like what would you actually rather and i think sometimes especially if you don't have any like financial you know education you're not really that mature it's probably a little bit it's probably very important to probably get, take the 40k for the rest of your life even though it's not that much of a salary do you know what i mean it's probably beneficial long term because that 10 mil up front it's probably a bit dicey it's probably a bit risky for most people myself included just to have that up front you'll probably get into up up to a lot of nonsense you'll probably buy yourself a gold house and purchase all kinds of nonsense and just squander it on silly things anyway so it's quite beneficial to actually do go the steady route you know, but Brenda just saw like because that's the thing that I've always believed. My theory has been that I think my my personal theory is this: I think that Brendan has all like always seen himself as someone special anyway, and I think his earlier career when he never really made it, like he wasn't able to fucking um. <laughs> I've just seen the keep everyone glove. Okay, the keep tea. That was a good comment. Sorry, I'm late. I found out my wife was having a baby three days ago. <laughs> I had to cancel the tour. Oh my god, honestly. Big up Keith T. Big up Keith T. Thank you for joining. Oh, fucking Brian Callen, man. Fucking Brian Callen, isn't it? I just found like how long do you think those guys spend making up their lives when they got cancelled the show? Do you think they just meet before the show and just like run through ideas, just like shoot the shit, just brainstorm right there before they're about to start the show? How long do you think they think about the lie? Like surely when you think about a lie, you have to think about the lie. Because I don't know, again, I don't, I try my best not to lie. There are moments where I do, but I try my best to tell the truth as much as I can. But I don't know what is the best way to actually lie. Is it the best way to lie to add more DLs than necessary? Is it to admit and act aloof? Is it to try and pretend you're surprised? Like, how do you lie? Like, good, because I've those guys can't lie. Like, you know, imagining that, you know, making up a concoction that your wife got pregnant, that's why... You now have to cancel the show. It's like, hold on. You just realize your wife is pregnant now <laughs> with your second child. <laughs> Actually, your fourth child altogether. And you're fucking nearly 60 years old. Like, come on, bro. But yeah, so going back to my theory, I believe that Brendan always felt like he was special, but he never got the success that he thought he deserved due to his talent, how people regarded him, his athleticism, his size. He always probably thought he was destined for greatness. And it never happened. So he was kind of in a bit of a bad place um, after the football thing didn't work out, right? He's working in the gym. He's trying to make ends meet, blah, blah, blah. Then the stand, then the podcast thing happens with Brian Callan. Then the standout thing happens. And I think for him, that was like validation. Like, see, I told you, I knew it. I knew I'd be successful. I knew I'd do it. Like it kind of gave him the validation and, com and confidence that he needed to be like, yeah, I always knew I'd be a special that's why you get this weird attitude that he has. That's my belief. Like, because he's got this weird 
confidence and bravado and arrogance for somebody that doesn't really have much talent um you know he thinks of himself very 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 highly which is a bit weird as well considering the lack of stuff he's achieved in life i think that's part of it i think he always believed like he, remember what i said in the stream before like you know i was always in the gifted and talented groups right and i always i was always because i think I, I identify that because i think i was always told that i would be special and then I remember going to like college. Like that was the first time I went to like a school. Like, you know, it's, it's like the same with all of us. Yeah. You go to college. That's the first time you meet other kids outside of your like local area when you go to like a college. And I remember going to college. I was like, oh shit, I'm not as smart or as amazing as I thought I was. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're like, oh shit, I'm an, I'm an absolute idiot. <laughs> I'm so dumb compared to everybody around me. I thought, fuck, that was the first time that, and, and that got a real awakening. But that was when I was like 16, 17. So Brendan to still think like that. And he's like 40 something with two kids or three kids and a wife is like, let's continue. Brendan laughing, having a good time. At do you remember when you used to do all these, by the way? Do you remember, the, do you, do you remember these? Do you remember Brendan used to do these, all these exaggerated faces and shit for the cameras? He used, have, he, used have, he used to love posting his pictures on his Instagram. Now it's just like, what, him LARPing as a truck guy. Oh my God, bro. Sebastian Mansalco. Do you think he could even get on the phone with him now? Do you think he could even reply back to a DM? Do you think he, could, do you think he, gets, he probably gets left on scene? Brenner was hanging about with Sebastian, like, Wow. Joe Diaz was right. He got too much too soon. He has no business standing next to Sebastian Masaka or even Joe Joe Rogan. No business whatsoever. Like being in their company. No business. And to think he fucked this all up by saying, I know bald guys who slang dick. Because I think Rogan was... Maybe Rogan on the sly is actually a bit of a dick slinger. Maybe, right? Maybe he's known around town for like throwing it down. Who knows? He's made enough money. He's super successful. People are probably, and he's, you know, powerful enough. People are probably willing to pay to keep his secrets. I wonder if maybe Rogan saw a kind of a brother in arms because Brenda's clearly a guy that's always ready, right? He's always got a boner, ready to fucking go. Baddies and addies, addies and baddies, baddies and addies, addies and baddies. He finally finds a brother that he can like, you know, cheat together with, right? Do get up to some, some boy things. And then Brendan just goes and starts opening his mouth. Yap, 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 yap. Oh, bald guys, I can slang dick. It's like, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. What is wrong with you? You're, you're fucking exposing everything. Shh. He probably was so angry. Like, what the fuck are you doing, bro? Nobody's supposed to fucking know about this. You're the only person I'm fucking told. And then Brendan goes, I know, I know bald guys that slang dick. <sighs> having fun having a fucking blast at the i think that's the taping still of you'd be surprised look at that look at that you broken that you'd be surprised giving him pointless and shit like what i would love to know what rogan's thought when he saw the taping of you'd be surprised what did he actually think i want to know i would love to know what did rogan think when he saw the taping or you'd be surprised i would love to know i would love to know what did he actually think the first time he saw it What the fuck is that? Like, <laughs> oh. wow, the good old days, right? One of the worst podcast appearances ever. I feel so bad for him, man. This Logan Paul and his friends did him so dirty. Like, he got a big time so hard. Yeah, yeah, we got dinner. We got to go dinner. It's 4 p.m. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go go dinner at four PM and everyone was shocked. What what dinner? First I've heard of it. Dinner. Oh, I felt so bad for Brendan, man. This is one of the worst appearances ever. You do YouTube. <laughs> you do YouTube. Oh, Logan's a piece of shit, man. Logan's a real Hollywood. Like that's the thing with someone like a Logan Paul. I think Contrary to popular belief, I think actually, if you actually met, I think you'd actually have a better time bumping into Jake Paul than Logan Paul. 
I think Jake Paul, you could probably have a cordial, normal conversation with. I think Logan Paul is the real diva. I think if you spoke to Logan Paul a weird way, he would definitely make you feel like a big, like a small guy. Big up QFT. Appreciate you, brother. The BAPA business plan is to claim views across the BAPAverse to trick sponsors, then he uses the money from sponsors to buy more views. It was our ways the house of cards. 100%. And now it's coming falling down. You know what I, you know what I checked the other day, by the way? I was just curious. I checked across, I think I checked the Shorb Show. I checked the Fighter and the Kid. And I also checked um, Golden Hour. You know what makes the most money out of those three shows? monthly via adsense forget the sponsors just on social blade short show golden hour firing a kid you know what makes the most money the golden hour the golden hour makes the most money at all three shows and it's the newest one so clearly the fucking you know shit's going downhill on the other shows um golden hour was probably only really successful because of the diddler really chris Lee is probably the only one who's actually keeping eyes on that show because his fan base is super loyal so it's pretty wild it's pretty fucking wild to think that it's pretty wild to think that but big up you keith t yeah that whole game of that whole what you call it house of cards is fucking wild <laughs> in the gym oh shit he's actually wham here isn't it Fuck, Brandon Ashley actually looks ripped there. He's not that big anymore. Or Zempic sucked all that fucking muscle mass off. But rare BGL sighting as well. I don't know who that is. Some fans, I'm assuming, right? <laughs> Waving to an adoring crowd. Wow, man. Yeah, he was definitely given too much too soon. He was definitely given too much fucking too soon, man. I swear to God, it's fucking incredible. I love it. I love, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. <clears throat> Bro, you thought he was going to be, you thought he was going to be Dave Chappelle. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It always gets me, bro. He actually thought he was going to be Dave Chappelle. He really thought he was going to be that guy. Like, it's just like, I can't believe it, man. Like, I'm, I'm all for having ambition and wanting to like test yourself and stuff, but you have to know where you land, man. You have to know what level you're at. You really have to. You can't be that delusional where you literally think, oh, yeah, I'm going to be that guy. It's like, come on, bro. Really? Really? Come on, sir. Come on. Come on. But hey, what do I know? What do I know? <laughs> 